and then welcome back to A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. Now it's time for our regular art bike feature where some of your favourite artists demonstrate a bite-sized project to encourage you to try something new. This week, mixed media artist Alison Board reveals a simple technique for introducing a lovely textured finish to your works of art. Hello everyone. Today I would like to show you a technique that I call rag rolling and it's a brilliant way for getting your wet into wet to behave itself. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mix up some colours ready and I'm going to mix up two or three different ones so that you can see how you can use the rag rolling for clouds or for grass or for general texture. So we're going to go, let's go with Prussian blue, one of my favourite colours, nice deep dark blue, great for stormy skies. So that's the first one I'm going to mix up. Second one I'm going to mix up is a green. We'll go for hooker's green. Nice big puddle of it. And the third one that I'm going to mix up is going to be a alizarin crimson. So you'll be able to see this technique on a variety of colours and see how it can work best for you. So the first thing I'm going to do with standard wet into wet is to wet my paper first. So I'm just going to put water all over the paper, making sure I've got no patches, making sure that it's evenly spread. And this is always the technique that people seem to find quite tricky with regard to the timing, to dropping the colour back in. But the great news about rag rolling is that if you get it wrong, no matter how spectacularly wrong you get it, rag rolling will save you. So whilst I'm waiting for the shine to go off of that paper, I'm going to get my rag ready, which is just a piece of kitchen roll. And I'm going to concertina it up and put it to one side ready. In fact, I'm going to make two so that I can use them in the different colours. So there we go, fan-shaped um, kitchen roll, ready to go. Looking back at my paper, I can see that it's pretty ready. So I'm going to start with the blue, just drop the colour in, nice and strong. Going to go straight for the green, popping that in, and then I'm going to add the red at the bottom. So you can use your imagination as to what these colours represent. You might think of it as skies, you might think of it as foliage, you might think of it as foreground. When you're doing wet into wet, it can be quite tricky to get the timing right so that everything is evenly wet. And one brilliant way of getting over this problem is if it gets all out of control or if it starts to run down to the bottom of your page, you can use your concertina to mop that up without having to touch it. And then the other thing that you can do is if you've got it to a point where it's starting to dry, but it's starting to make funny marks and you'd like to turn those funny marks to your advantage, you can use the kitchen roll by just rolling it very lightly and very gently over the surface. You can do more than one pass if you want to, but it is dangerous doing a second pass because you're in danger of disturbing what you've already done. However, if you've not timed it quite right and it's a little bit too wet, they'll all start to merge back together again. So sometimes it is a good idea to do a second pass. And what that does is take all the excess moisture off of the paper and gives you a lovely textural finish to your work. Great tip there for controlling wet into wet, creating clouds, skies, grass, and adding general texture to the surface of your paper. Thanks, Alison. OK, it's time for us to leave the studio and return to the fantastic Derbyshire countryside as we continue to look how to get the most out of your camera and take some great reference photographs packed full of depth and detail. Right, folks, here we are then at the side of the road in Polter Park in Langworth in Derbyshire again. And I want to show you one or two tricks for more low light photography, how to get the best out of your camera, making the scene brighter where it's a bit dark and, and vice versa. Let's get started. In a situation like this, you can see the sun's shining, but the sun is only catching the background trees in the mid-ground field. So all this foreground is actually very dark because it's in the shade of the tree. Now if I take a photograph with the flash off, it's too dark down there, but turning the flash on, 
forced on or a fill-in flash, the exposure remains the same for the background, but just nicely illuminates the foreground area, creating a lovely effect. ISO sensitivity really makes a massive difference to the lighting or dark in your photographs. It's in the menu. Look for the ISO sensitivity option and if it's set to 100 as you can see there, this is great for a day like today where it's nice and clear, nice and sunny, nice and bright. If you find it's a bit dark on the day, maybe a bit cloudy or you're taking indoor shots or concert shots, you can increase this setting to 800 or 1600 which will massively lighten the photograph up and the dark areas and the light areas. The downside to this is the higher the number, the more grain or noise granules you'll see on the photograph. If you stick round about 800 mark, you should be okay and you won't notice the noise grains. So there you go folks, hopefully that's given you a bit more insight into your camera, getting the best out of your camera, because remember good photographs lead to good paintings. Use it as a compositional tool as well as a tool to capture the fantastic countryside and buildings and nature. For more information on using your camera, get on the internet folks and just search the make and model and you'll find manuals, even video tutorials on how to get the best out of your camera. I'll see you soon. Join us next time when I'll be turning one of my reference photographs into a picture perfect painting from the comfort of my home studio in Langworth in Derbyshire. Jan Gardner is fun taking mixed media on a walk. Morient shares his passion for SAA oil brushes. Watercolour wonder Jeff Kersey will be popping in to lift the lid on his box of tricks. And popular SAA artist Marilyn Alice unlocks the secret behind getting to grips with scale and proportion. So tune in next time for another vibrant edition of A Splash of Paint. Whether you're a beginner, improver or professional, discover more about the full range of SAA membership benefits available to bring a bigger splash of paint into your life. Visit www.saa.co.uk for details.